Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 24th, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, warm, going to be in the mid to high 50s, sunny, and very, very windy. Uh, but hey, we'll take it for February. Uh, and the good thing is, you know, it's been a weird winter with all these odd temperature swings and snow and then 60s. And uh, the Phillies are playing baseball in Clearwater. Spring is going to arrive very, very soon. That's a good thing. So I hope you're all having a, a nice weekend. Uh, today we've got something a little bit different. I'm going to take you on a road trip, and we're going to start that in just a second. But before we get to the to the road trip, uh, to see the uh, a little bit about uh, Penn's Landing in Philadelphia, some some of the historical ships that are there, and a visit to the Lyne Nielsen Tool Work Show that, that I attended yesterday. Uh, before we get to that, I want to do a, a few shout outs. And I got three today. Uh, one is an honorary shout-out, and I'll explain. Uh, first one is a guy who goes by the name Groovin Piper. Uh, Groovin Piper is brand new. He's just got about two videos. Uh, seems to be a very well-spoken guy, uh, fun to listen to, easy to listen to. Um, and he's a drummer, so that's that's something. Uh, <laughs> that's that's something that uh, yeah, I, I know a few drummers. Uh, Greg, of course, uh, NYC drummer. And uh, they're, they're, they've all been just great guys. I've really enjoyed uh, knowing them. Uh, not, not that I'm trying to stereotype drummers or anything, but uh, it's a compliment, Groove, and I hope you understand. <laughs> so I'll put a link down below to Groove and Piper. Uh, the second one is my friend Codger Jim. And Codger Jim has been uh, a, a frequent commenter. Uh, I think he's been around for, for quite a while and very active in, in, in comments. But he's now made a, an intro video, and it was fantastic. It was great. We learned something about him, talked about his, his, his pipes, the pipes he's had over the years and everything. Great video. I'll put a link down below. Please go visit both uh, Groovin Piper and Codger Jim, uh, and, and give them a sub. They, they, I think you're, you're going to enjoy both their channels. Finally, I want to give an honorary shout-out to my friend Ghost Cobb. I know you probably all know Ghost Cobb. Uh, he's been at this for a while. He's well above the 100 sub point. But I really appreciate what he's been doing with his Find Five Friday uh, videos. Uh, and, and there's some overlap between what I'm doing with my shout outs and what he does. It's inevitable because uh, we're looking for the same thing. But uh, he does a great job with it as well. He's doing a lot to help build the community and he's just a really nice guy. So if you don't know Ghost Cobb, link to his channel down below. Go see him and definitely watch his Find Five Friday videos because there you're going to learn about five guys that are that are new to the community rather than my measly two. So with that, guys, let's uh, let's not waste any time because uh, I really want to get on the road with you, and we'll head off. Well, on a hello. Trip. We are uh, sitting in the parking lot of Wawa. Uh, if you don't have a Wawa, America's greatest convenience store. I'm sorry. Uh, came here to get gas and to uh, put some air in the tires because it's winter and the. Uh, the little gauge on the dashboard was telling me I need air in my tires. I filled them all up to the right pressure, and the little gauge on the dashboard is still telling me I need air in my tires. All right, so we are off, um, and we are going to the Lion Nielsen Tool Work Show. Assuming they let me get out of my parking spot. So I have, uh, it's about a little after 10 o'clock. The show starts at 10 I, and it goes till 5. I don't really plan to be spending more than about an hour or so there, so I didn't want to leave too early. And I've got uh, a thermal cup full of coffee, which I'm quite happy about. And I've got my 7 le 622 with Haunted Bookshop and a pouch of haunted bookshop to get me through the day, and I'm a happy guy. So we are going to be going to see the Line Nielsen Tool Show, and, and maybe some of the sites around there. And for those that don't know, Line Nielsen is a really fantastic producer of traditional woodworking tools uh, of quality that you just can't get anymore. And it might be, it might appear a bit hypocritical of me after my bit of a rant yesterday about commercialism and, and all that to be taking you. What just happened? Oh, 
I don't know if any of that just recorded, which is a shame. So, if not, I'll I'll fill in later. Um, but we are going to the Line Nielsen Tool Workshop, and um, Line Nielsen is a manufacturer of really fine quality traditional woodworking tools, uh, the kind that just people don't make anymore. Very few people make, and I'm pretty excited uh, to, to go to the show. I've been to them in the past and I am a, a, a user of Line Nielsen tools. Now it might seem a little bit hypocritical of me because I just did a video yesterday ranting about consumerism and you know the need to buy the best of everything and, and, and all that. But I think this is a different case and I'll, I'll at least plead my case to you and, and you can decide whether or not I'm being a hypocrite here. The tools that this company makes are really better. They're, they're more expensive, some would call them luxury tools, but they work right from the start. You don't have to sharpen them. They're made with very high quality tool steel. They take resharpening very well, and they just do the job. They're, they're, the fit and finish is perfect on them. Now, you can buy a hand plane or a saw you'd be better off buying a used one, uh, even an antique one, and you can get it, you know, fixed up and, and working in a way that you'll be able to do everything that you can do with a line Nielsen tool, no, no question about it, and I've done that myself. I have distance saws uh, that, that I restored. I have uh, a set of Stanley planes and, and the Miller Falls planes, and, and I've restored those, and they, you know, flatten the soles and everything, and, and they work beautifully. But it takes a lot of work to do that, and I, I'm at a point in my woodworking life where I just want to work wood. I don't want to make and, and repair tools. And the quality of these tools is really such that I think uh, you, it's worth it's worth the um, the extra cost. So that's where we're heading. Uh, I'm not going to take you on too much of a ride because I'm going to be getting on the turnpike in a minute and that's just going to be boring. Uh, we should be getting there. It's going to take about an hour to get there. And what I will probably do is cut this off here before we get on the turnpike. And then I will pick it up again once we get to the show. Well, folks, I have no idea how well this camera is working out in this mode. Uh, I'm hoping that you can see me, and I'm hoping that you can hear me. A lot of background noise here. I'm uh, parked on a fairly large uh, road here called Columbus Boulevard, and I'll pan you around just so you can see that. And I'm in the Penn's Landing area of Philadelphia. Actually, right over there, across the river, is Camden and that ship that you can hopefully see there is the battleship New Jersey which is a, an Iowa class battleship uh, they opened that uh, I don't know maybe eight years ago uh, as, a, as a, a museum and they sometimes have events there uh, I have not been but it's on my list of things I'd like to do so I parked down here um, and I have not been here since I was a child so I'm, I'm interested in just kind of walking around a little bit before I get to the museum. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm about a half mile from the museum. So I'm going to head down that way just to orient you. The, the river is to my right. And then if we look over there, you can start to see some of the city. And I'll keep you on until we can at least see a little bit more of the city. I'm actually not sure what this structure is. That that was not here. It looks like it might be condominiums or something. That was not here the when I was last in this area. I don't come down to Philadelphia very often. Um, not not for any real reason. It just I don't need to. Uh, but when I was growing up, you know, this this area was within walking distance. Actually, a, a very easy bike ride from where I lived. And this is where, you know, when I was a kid, this was much more open. There was uh, lots of places you could you could play around, and the traffic wasn't this bad, so it's very different. There you can see some more of the city. And the skyline of the city has changed quite a bit as well. I mean, I, 
I knew that, I've seen it. Uh, but those buildings, you would never see buildings that large in Philadelphia when I was, was growing up here because there was a law that did not allow anyone to build higher than the top of City Hall. Anyway, let me uh, walk along here. If I run into anything else interesting, I'll bring you back. If not, we'll go to the show. I walked a bit further down, uh, about maybe a half mile, and we're back along the, uh, the Delaware River. And this ship that you're seeing here is actually a restaurant. Uh, this is the tall ship Mushaloo, which has been a restaurant for a very long time. Uh, I think it actually was further down than this. They must have moved it because it was never close to the Olympia, which is just beyond it there. I'll tell you more about that when we get there. Uh, but this, I, I ate here once when I was like in high school. Uh, it was a nice experience, but it's, uh, you know, it's been largely restored. And I do think it used to be down under the, or closer to the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, which is Oh, I don't know, maybe about a half mile further down the road here. So I'm quite surprised to see it here. Uh, I'll have to look into that and see if they moved it or if I'm just remembering it wrong. And here you can see, as we move past the Mushaloo, the SS Olympia and the submarine Bakuna. And these are actually very special to me. So, my uh, when, when I was young, uh, probably starting at about the age of five or six, my dad would take a vacation every summer for a week. And he would bring me into the city to all the various museums and we always made a stop at the uh, the Olympia and the Bakuna. So I don't actually know much about the Bakuna other than I can tell you it's a bit of a claustrophobic experience uh, touring it and we didn't do that tour as much as we did the Olympia. The Olympia was every every year. The Olympia was originally launched in 1895 and it was the flagship of Commodore George Dewey and uh, Dewey and the Olympia were in the uh, Spanish-American War and Dewey was quite famous for the role he played in that war. And this is it's wonderful to tour it because you can see Dewey's private quarters, you can see his dining room, uh, you can get a real sense for what life was like at that time. And that, of course, is a great period of time because, you know, the 18, late 1890s, that's when Arthur Conan Doyle was writing the home stories and Holmes and Watson were prowling about London. Everybody was smoking a pipe. Just a, a really good time. So maybe I promised my wife a visit to the Olympia. So maybe this summer we could actually do that and I'll bring bring you along just to, to see a bit of the inside of it. I don't think they'd mind filming some some museums don't like that. But there you have it. And straight ahead there, that green building is where we're headed for the Linus and Tool Workshop. So I'll uh, bring you back when we get there. So I thought this was worth uh, sharing with you. This is very interesting. It's, it's called the Hope Fence. And the idea is that this is a space where folks can hang individual locks. The locks all have a story behind them. And in some cases, the story is actually on the lock. In other cases, it's private. But uh, each person that hangs a lock on here hung it for a reason and uh, it's really interesting you know so several of them are 
things like couples that uh, are celebrating something or maybe maybe their wedding maybe an anniversary uh, there's some that are more personal just for a single individual maybe maybe a loved one that's passed away or something like that and you know, there's just all sorts of sentiments here um, and then there's this so yeah we're inside the museum now they did a really good job of hiding the entrance to the museum which was quite nice uh, haven't been here maybe this is another event for this summer looks interesting though looks very interesting I don't want to wander too far because there's a an admission cost that has been waived so that I can get to the tool show on the other side Excuse me. All right, so I'm just going to keep rolling until somebody tells me to stop, and we'll see what we can can uh, learn here. little um, router plane. I was hoping for the large router plane. Looks like they may be out of those. We need a tight enough that it's going to clamp that way. But if I'm really struggling here, I tend to think of these dials. Once I get that, and you can just see the quality of these, how good the fit and finish is on the soles. Well, as you guys could probably see, that was a bit more claustrophobic than I had hoped. But, uh, yeah, I hope, hopefully I gave you a flavor of the show. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it's nice to be able to pick those tools up and actually use them on some wood and get a feel for how they perform. And uh, I did wind up buying a tapered carcass saw, which is the main reason I came here. Pretty excited about that because I've actually been saving up for it for two years. Uh, I don't know if you've followed me for a long time. Uh, about two years ago, my wife gave me a uh, tapered dove toss dovetail saw from Lee, Lee Nelson that uh, I love and I started at that point uh, planning to get the carcass saw that uh, is kind of its its friend so looking forward to getting that they, they ship everything so I paid for it but it'll be shipped and uh, yeah hopefully I can get some nice woodworking projects in the works uh, to share with you guys so I'll give you one last uh, pan around here the uh, we're, we're back on the Delaware River that is the Ben Franklin Bridge that you see there, uh, bridge over into uh, Camden. And there you see the Camden waterfront on that side, and then Battleship New Jersey again. And then down the road there's the, the Olympia, the um, Mushaloo, and that condo in the distance is where I parked. So I'm going to walk back there and head for home and I'll turn it back over to me in the shop. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I really had a great time, and uh, 
hopefully you, you enjoyed both the, the historical sites that we saw uh, as well as uh, the little bit of time we spent at the Lai Nielsen Tool Show. I'm very excited about the saw, uh, and I'll, I'll let you know when that arrives. I'll, I'll show it off for, for sure. But like I said, the, the quality of the cut that saw has compared to anything else that I own is just unbelievable. Uh, th their tools just, they're pricey, but if you're doing a lot of hand tool work and you're at a time in your life when you can afford it and you've already spent the time learning to use the tools and you've uh, you know paid your dues in terms of using lower quality tools and learned how to make them work for you, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, they're they're really just fun to use, and they make woodworking a more enjoyable activity. So with that, guys, I'm going to draw this video to a close. Thank you all for watching. Watch, uh, I've got a new video coming out this Tuesday. Uh, it's part of a new series that I'm calling Tobacco Talk Tuesdays, and I hope you enjoy that. It's not going to be every Tuesday, but it will always be on a Tuesday. So take a look at that when it comes out. Have Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and have a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I really had a good time. Oh, smoke's coming back. Yeah. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I really had a good time. This is silly.